Ford has been playing a bit fast and loose recently with its badges, hasn't it? I refer, of course, to the Puma. Formerly a little terrier of a coupe, recently resurrected as yet another small SUV. And now there's this, an all electric SUV with a Mustang badge on its nose, eh? What you're looking at is the new Ford Mustang Mach-E. That's right, Ford has named a battery powered SUV after the world's most famous muscle car. The Mach-E bit is a nod to the high performance Mustang Mach-1 from the late 60s. It's Ford's first mass market electric car, the first project from the internal EV skunk works known as Team Edison, and you can order your Mustang Mach-E now, but only through Ford's online portal with either rear wheel drive or dual motor four wheel drive, and the choice of a 75 kilowatt hour or a 99 kilowatt hour battery pack. To save me reading out an endless list of numbers, here's a spec box for you to hit pause and peruse at your leisure. Got all that? Excellent, just in case you didn't know, here's a bit of a breakdown. The cheapest one is the rear wheel drive 75 kilowatt hour model, which should cost from around 40 grand, but you still get 280 miles on the WLTP range that is, and around 252 horsepower. The one with the claimed longest range is the rear wheel drive model, but with the bigger battery. With that, you get 370 miles of range. The fastest one, that's the all wheel drive model with the big battery, you get 332 horsepower there, 0 to 60 in seven seconds. And the spangliest one isn't this, this is just an all wheel drive version, but it's called the first edition. It's a limited run and it gets all the options ladled on it. So stuff like unique grabber blue paint, uh, full length panoramic roof, a b &O sound system, 360 degree cameras, the lot. No prices for that one yet, but we suspect somewhere north of 50 grand. Which is all well and good, I hear you cry, but none of that, apart from perhaps the range before you have to fill up again, has anything remotely to do with a good old V8 powered Mustang. The link, of course, is in the way this thing looks. Okay, so we're gonna do our design walk around a bit now, but before we do, I think it's worth just taking a moment and just taking in this car's overall design because Mustang and SUV, they're two things that just shouldn't go together. It's like strawberries and balsamic vinegar, but it does, it kind of works, doesn't it? My first impression when I walked in here was it looks like a concept car because you've got this bluff grille, you've got no door handles. It's smoother than a production car should be, isn't it? Anyway, let's look at the details, maybe work out why this car looks like it does. And the first thing is the face, unmistakably Mustang, right? But get a picture of the, the new, the 2019 coupe out and you'll see there are no actual carryover parts. Three stripes in the headlight design, that's Mustang, of course. Narrow eyes. Um, ooh, this is a bit of a giveaway, isn't it? Mustang badges. There are no Ford badges on this car. Apparently, they agonized over this one internally. Should it just be an inspired by Mustang SUV or should it be a proper extension of the Mustang family? The thinking was, if you're proud of the car, if the car's good enough, go big or go home. And I think they've made the right decision here. That's obviously on the grill, so this is bluff. This whole thing could have just been flush or it could have been fake mesh to make it look like a petrol powered car, but none of those quite work. So what they did was this bluff grill to let you know it's an EV, but then inset it slightly, just hinting at a grill. I think it works quite nicely, doesn't it? Uh, and down here are the air intakes with the switchable flaps that you so often see on electric cars. Coming around the side, wheels. Yep, these are 19 inch wheels. These are the biggest ones that you can get for the moment at least. There's your charging port. Then we get to what is probably the defining feature of the Mustang Mach-E, that's the doors. The fact that there are no door handles. Obviously there's aero benefits to that, but I can't think of another car that didn't have door handles cut into the sheet metal. The McLaren 12C, perhaps? I'm sure the internet's gonna correct me on that, but here's how it works. So you hook up your phone to the car, you can use your phone as a key, or you have your key in the pocket, and as you approach the car, the door opens automatically by about four inches. I don't have my phone hooked up to the car, so I'm gonna push this button instead. If I push that and the door comes out to meet you, you stick your fingers behind it and you open it up. Simple as that. You'll notice there's a little handle here. That's because in testing, some customers were a bit worried about getting their fingers in that gap there, so they've included the handle. And the rear door, exactly the same. Push this button here 
the door comes out to meet you, stick your hand in and you flick it open. Ford says it's actually a lot easier to uh, open doors like that rather than having to pull a handle like this when you've got babies in one arm, laptops in the other arm, shopping, hanging around your neck, who knows. And here's another thing, if your phone runs out of battery or you've lost your key, which let's face it is quite likely, then there are numbers. There's a keypad on the B pillar here, so you can use a four digit code to get into the car. And then once you're in there, you can put in another four digit code on the screen to start the thing up. Back to the design. Quite an interesting feature here. You'll notice the body color comes down here. That gives you that lovely sloping, sweeping coupe-like roof line, but the actual roof stays a bit higher. It separates away from the body color. That gives you the practicality, that gives you the space inside, but in silhouette, you get the design. All right, coming around the back, what else can I tell you? Well, it's a bit of a square ass, isn't it? But there's a reason for that. You need this bluff rear end to keep the air attached down the side of the car for as long as possible, to reduce the turbulence, to maximize the range. What else have we got? More Mustang badges, more Mustang inspired lights. In fact, I spoke to the designer of this car earlier and he said he didn't want to be too heavy handed with the Mustang design cues, that he had a box of ingredients and in the corner there was a little pot of Mustang spice. And just a word on the dimensions, because frankly, I make most cars look bigger than they are. Overall, it's 42 millimeters narrower, but 16 millimeters longer and 27 millimeters lower than a Porsche Macan. In terms of boot space, you get 402 litres or 1,420 litres with the rear seats down, which is about 100 litres less than you get with a Macan. But you make that up with a 100 litre front boot, which interestingly is waterproof and washable with a drain plug at the bottom. Perfect then for very small, very wet dogs. When it comes to the interior, Ford has clearly taken a leaf out of Tesla's book here because there are physical buttons here, you just can't, f oh no, there they are, there's some on the wheel. There's a gear selector down there. There's a volume switch on the central screen, but you get the idea. Screen is king in this car, you get two of them. The first is an instrument cluster behind here, 10.2 inch screen, really slim. That gives you all your driving information and your speed is labeled ground speed, which is a classic Mustang Q. And then you get the central portrait orientated 15.5 inch screen, which is absolutely massive. And in fact, that's half an inch bigger than the one you get in the Model 3. Clear one up and there. Now all the functions on this screen aren't working because this is an early prototype, but the big idea here is this is an all new HMI and it's written in HTML5 code rather than software specific to the car. So it's easy to update and it responds to the screen. The other big idea is the fact that you can run apps from CarPlay and Android Auto simultaneously with native apps on the screen. So for example, you could have Waze running over here, helping you to avoid the traffic, but then Ford's native nav over here with all your charging stops along the way. It's also got over the air updates. Uh, there is a true range predictor, which takes into account weather and gradient and traffic along the way to tell you actually how much range you'll have when you get there. And it's supposed to learn as you go along. So after just a few hours, it'll only bring up the functions it knows you really need. In terms of seating position, we are obviously slightly higher off the ground, but all the reference points here are taken from the Mustang. So the way the seat relates to the steering wheel and the shoulder line here, all your reference points are taken from the coupe. In terms of materials, well, there's some quite interesting stuff going on. Obviously, the interior is dominated by this slab of screen in the middle, but you've got quite an interesting mix here. Leather seats, leather here, a sort of fake carbon fiber coating here, your air vents, and then it gets quite interesting because this entire panel that runs the full width of the dash is one of the speakers from the Bang & Olufsen premium 10 speaker sound system. So it's not only a good place to put the speaker, it's also a nice tactile material to have right in front of you. Ford has obviously made the most of the fact that it's got an EV architecture, so you don't have a transmission tunnel here. What you have is a large storage tray with wireless charging for your phone, another storage tray underneath, big cup holders, another storage bin there, and there's space for three full-size adults in the back. It really is 
quite a complete car, this, especially when you consider they developed it from scratch in just two years. Okay, they did have an all new EV platform ready to go. But even so, it's not just good, this car. It's radical. It's unlike anything I've ever seen from Ford before. And this is just the beginning of Ford's EV mission. It's already confirmed that Transit and F-150 EVs are imminent, while an even quicker GT version of the Mach-E will arrive in around nine months' time. Interesting, isn't it, that Ford has gone premium with this thing, aimed high. It's aimed for the Tesla Model Y in terms of range and tech and square footage of screen. I'll be honest though, when I first heard they were gonna pimp out the Mustang name in an SUV, I thought, that's a horrible idea. But now I see the logic. This could have been just another generic crossover, but instead, Ford has taken desirability into account. It's grabbed our attention. Is it gonna drive like a Mustang? No, of course it's not, but that's missing the point, isn't it? If you're more into V8s and burnouts, well, don't fret. The original Mustang isn't going anywhere anytime soon.